When Amy Allen went snooping through her husband Tim's office files, what she found broke her heart. And he'd written pages of different prostitutes, their names, all their stats, and how to get a hold of them. And then um, some he had written, like what he'd done with some of them. Oh and that was crushing. I said, I'm out of here. I can't deal with this anymore. What I came back to was an empty house with her wedding ring sitting on the mantle at the house and realized that it's over. Tim's secret sex addiction had finally come to light and his marriage to Amy was over. It all started in his childhood. Pornography had been in my life since I was about nine, probably even before that. Um, Playboy, my grandparents, my grandfather had it and I looked for it all the time when I was down there. Tim's addiction to porn only increased as he got older. Unfortunately, after he married Amy, he began playing out his fantasies with other women. That pornography stuff in magazines is not enough anymore. That was actually something different and interesting. I want more of that. At home, Amy knew something was wrong in their relationship, but couldn't quite figure it out. I just didn't feel like he didn't even want to be with me. I felt like his ball and chain at times. As the internet grew in popularity, Tim's lust for outside sex grew out of control. Tim developed an ongoing relationship with a woman that he met on the web. Amy found out when she discovered condoms in a bag they both shared. I confronted him and I screamed at him and I was yelling at him and screaming obscenities and saying, why are you doing this to us? What's wrong with you? I packed some bags and took it down to his office that day and put him in his truck. I'm about ready to throw away everything since we've met, everything that I've worked for, for an affair that I've had with this young woman who I don't even really like, but it was sex and that still had its tentacles on me. Eventually, Amy and Tim tried to salvage their marriage and Tim moved back home. They started going to church, but Tim's mind was elsewhere. He still craved sex. You get on the internet and you see escorts and prostitutes and whatever you want to call them offering what I wanted for money. No, you know, no strings attached. Tim cruised the city streets, massage parlors, and the internet to set up rendezvous with prostitutes. That's when Amy found his files in their home office. Some of the stuff she was reading was, you know, horrible but I had put it down and she had found it and packed everything up and left. Amy moved back home with her mom. She started attending church and accepted Christ as her savior. God was helping me to see him through his eyes and that we're all sinners. Tim was at his lowest point. His marriage was over and his life was at a crossroads. He started reading Christian books on sexual addiction. I was raised in the church. I mean, well, what does this have to tell me about myself? I knew there was probably something wrong because one half of my life has just come crashing down of a foundation I thought I had. Then, on their eighth wedding anniversary, Amy gave Tim a call. We'd both filed for divorce. He filed in Maryland and I filed in San Diego. And so there was nothing to lose. So we were very, very open and honest with each other and our feelings, our true feelings. She started talking to me about still loving me, which hurt. I didn't want to hear that, but at the same time, it, it, it was impacting me. Um, you know, how can she still love me? That was part of what I was asking myself at the time. She also read some scripture to me about, you know, sin is sin. Tim couldn't get Amy's words out of his mind. He finally cried out to God for help. And I just kept reading all this stuff and all, you know, who he was and what he did. Jesus is who he says he is. And I broke down in the basement of a house in Maryland. And he said, if you are who you are, you have to help me. If you're God, if you are who you say you are, help. Tim found a church and met with the pastor and opened up to him about it and just felt and knew that I could trust him and he would be open and you know would pray and would support in any way he possibly could. Amy and Tim began to talk. As they grew in their faith, they decided to meet. I gave her her ring back 
and told her that I was sorry and told her that, you know, the things I had done, are, they're unforgivable. I, but I'm following Jesus. I was afraid because I didn't want it to happen again. God's voice was stronger to me than anyone else's. As my parents said, don't go back with him. His parents said, don't go back with him. But I knew what God was telling me. And uh, I listened to his voice and I'm glad I did. Their love for each other has grown. And Tim and Amy now have two daughters. The growing that we're doing and the, the intimacy that we are now sharing and where the Lord is continuing to bring us back is something I never understood. And it's, it is a wonderful thing. It takes time and it takes forgiveness over and over and it takes agape love, his kind of love for each other. It's something only he can do. I mean, we are together because of Jesus.